Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be reviewing this Miniware MDP906. Okay, now this uh, power supply was sent in to us for review. Uh, we just have the power supply unit. We don't have the load or the master control because the, these things can be wirelessly controlled and there is a load that's in the same family. But in this video, we're just going to be taking a look at the power supply itself. Let's give this thing the traditional unboxing here. Comes in a little acrylic box. We have the power supply and we have some cables. So that's really all what's in the box. Uh, it's a little foam acrylic thing. You could definitely store it in here afterwards. Um, not much in the way of instructions. Uh, one of the things that I did notice it kind of lacks in the instructions here is much of a explanation of this DC port, uh, the input port. Uh, I guess they kind of assume you're gonna use USB-C. Um, however, the DC port, I did email him, it is, um, uh, the center is positive and the outer ring is negative because sometimes the polarity is different on that. So uh, it is a center positive there. The, the maximum is 30 volts on uh, the input of the DC jack there, and then it's 20 on the USB-C. Uh, note that with the USB-C, it is five amps max on there. So you really can't get the full power out of this thing from the USB-C, but you can, if you, if you get, if you go to 30 volts at 14 amps, you can get the full power out of that DC port there. Um, I believe it is 5.5 millimeters by 2.1, um, but I I'm not completely sure what size. It doesn't explain in the manual on that. So that's the, the first thing that uh, I noticed when I was looking over this unit. Um, it does have nice quality uh, banana jacks on there. The uh, wires that came with it are that kind of silicone, uh, it's that soft wire. So that's pretty nice where you have your, well, that one's actually ground, so positive ground. Uh, the other thing I notice here is that the um, these rings here, they're um, just painted on, so it's not etched on there, so that'll eventually wear off to show you the positive and negative. Uh, however, you'll see when we turn this thing on, uh, there are LEDs in there too, so it's uh, a little, little easier to tell um, once it's on which one's negative and which one's positive. Um, so that way if those do wear off on you, but it, it would have been nice to have some engraving there on it. Uh, and then the last thing I'm kind of noticing is your, your spacing is off from your typical, um, um, like multimeter space. However, it is about the same as your, um, as most of DC power supplies with, that have the ground in the middle. It is, it is about that same spacing. It may be a little bit less. Um, but it is, it's very similar to most of your kind of Chinese power supplies where they're spaced out as if there's not going to be another plug there. Uh, but it's still not quite exactly the same spacing. So it is kind of like an odd spacing on these. So if you have like those dual Pomona connectors, they're not going to go, uh, right in there. But, um, Honestly, with power supplies, I don't use those dual Pomona connectors very often. I do like the uh, patch cables and using patch cables. Uh, it's something I've gotten away from using alligator clips as much uh, and have moved to patch cables more often. So uh, yeah, I do like the standard banana connector there and not being stuck with a spade. Sometimes, sometimes you get that where you have the spade only or you have the insert where you have to insert a wire and tighten that. So um, overall, fit and finish of this thing though, it definitely doesn't feel cheap. You you have a nice, uh, everything's solid metal. Uh, and this thing's like the size of a cell phone for, for how much power you're getting here. See, I mean, it's, it, my cell phone's bigger than it. This is, this is uh, much smaller than uh, my cell phone. So uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely something that, uh, it's a lot of power in a small package here because you got, what, 10 amps at uh, 30 volts, uh, so 300 watts. Um, yep, 30, 30, 30 volts, 10 amps, um, all in uh, this this package size here. Uh, so some of the things that you should kind of caution yourself on um, is uh, it advertises having a very low ripple. Uh, one thing to, uh, to, to keep in mind with that very low ripple is 
your DC power source coming in, it can only reject so much ripple. There's only so much filtering this thing can do uh, from the power coming in versus what you get out. So that, um, that advertised ripple, definitely something you want to keep an eye on your input. And yeah, so before we set it up, uh, that is something that is not included with this power supply, which is its power supply. So this thing is kind of similar to those little face plates you can buy to build your own power supply, where it does all of the, the buck and boost of what's coming into it. Uh, it does all the controls and overcurrent and undercurrent, but it is not actually your AC to DC power supply. So you do need a AC to DC power supply uh, on the back end here. Uh, most people that I've seen are just using a, um, a USB uh, type C connector and just using the USB uh, input there. Uh, however, I'm actually going to use the DC barrel jack. It's actually kind of what took me a little bit longer to do my video was I needed to get some information from him on that DC barrel jack because it was not well documented. Um, so what I am using for my power source, I just had a lot of them laying around as an old uh, Dell laptop charger. Uh, so with this, I can't quite get the full power out of it. I do have another one that I could get the power out of it, but I, I don't need this. I don't need to get 300 watts out of this. I plan on using it uh, at my desk inside the house for projects that I bring inside because I've been spending a little less time out in my office and working in my house. Um, so that's what I have is I have this old Dell power supply that I cut the end off of and put a, um, this, the right size barrel jack on there. Um, so uh, also these laptop power supplies are pretty low ripple coming out of them. It's a pretty clean power source. Uh, so that was the other reason why I, I chose to go this route versus um, using uh, like a wall wart or, or something like that. A lot of those wall warts are really noisy and they're not very powerful. So you you lose a lot of the power you get out of this with uh, with your typical wall wart style power supply. Yeah, so let's uh, set this thing up and actually get into operation of it. All right, so let's turn this thing on. So that run, the run lock button is how you turn it on. And you have your LCD display here and you can set your voltage or set your current limit there. But before you get into that first, get to the input current and set it, the input current limit to whatever your power supply on the outside world's current limit is as well. That way you don't damage your power supply that's powering this and you uh, actually can get the full power if it's higher because this was set to four amps before um, so I upped it to what my power supply could handle just a little under because again I'm never actually going to run this thing all the way up uh, I probably will only ever be running at about five volts maximum probably one amp and um, probably 3.3 volts is really where it's going to live most of its life because it's going to be powering embedded projects on my bench inside. But, you know, however you want to use this thing, it's, uh, you definitely want to get into that menu and uh, change some of your limits there. So you can also see uh, what your input voltage is. So mine's a 19.73. Uh, this thing will buck and boost. So even if your input voltage is a little bit lower, uh, you still can get that full 30 volts out. So you don't have to make sure your power supply goes all the way up to 30 volts to get 30 volts out of this. It is a nice thing that sometimes you don't see on those little front panel ones I was mentioning earlier. Those things don't boost they just buck so your um your input voltage has to be greater than the output um they will run it lower but they just won't give you the full range um so yeah it's got a pretty simple to use user interface if you need to update the firmware uh, that is done back here same with most of the things from miniware uh, there are you know mod firmware out there for it so uh, definitely you can get more out of the package uh, but yeah it's just a simple rotary encoder here and a couple of buttons for your interface and then so once you're happy with it you turn it on and like i said uh, they do light up there. You have those LEDs that light up. So that does make it easier to make sure you're not going in the wrong uh, port. And you have this uh, little LED here indicating that it's running. And if you turn it off, uh, it goes away. It also will light up red if you go into like an overcurrent. Okay, so let's get started with the actual functional test of this unit here. 
Um, as you can see, it's currently running. The blue light is on and we're set to 13.29 on, uh, on here and we're displaying 13.293 there. It's actually set to 13.3, uh, but it knows what it's outputting uh, and it's pretty accurate. You can also see, so this is with no load. We have um, up in the top display there is my Fluke multimeter. It's just out of view here. So that is not edited in that is directly coming off of the Skippy communication out of the back of the multimeter. So um, the recording software, I just have it opened up on there. Uh, so that is actually live. I'm not post editing in those numbers for anybody that's not familiar with the channel. Um, so yeah, that is the DC ripple of it with uh, no load. So let's go ahead and load it down. You can see we had a small spike there um, and we can go up to the current limit. The current limit is set to five amps on here. So let's uh, go up to five amps and we can see we get a lot of ripple there, but that's just because it's turning on and off. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, change this to DC so we can see our line regulation because um, we have voltage drop across the load. So the way we're set up here is multimeter and then load. Uh, so that way the multimeter is basically a dry tap because um, you're going to have drop across the wire. Even though these wires are very close, you're still going to have some drop. Uh, same with through the connector, you're going to have some drop. But uh, yeah, so we're pretty much as close to the supply as we can be. Uh, and we'll see that it is 13.309, while this reads 13.296. I know that's a little bit small for you guys. That's why I uh, read it out for you. So uh, our, um, our line measurement's a, a little bit off. Uh, it's, um, but not much. I mean, that's, that's within margin there. Um, same with my fluke. I haven't calibrated it. So, uh, it, it is, uh, due for calibration. Um, so I would say we're within margin of measurement there. Uh, definitely nothing to bat an eye at. Uh, so let's, uh, go back down to like no load on it. Um, still right on, uh, what we have it set to. Uh, and then let's go up to, there we go. Tripping, uh, our current limit. So let's uh, see how close we can get to the current limit before it trips. So let's uh, bring this down and just see how accurate that is. Let's uh, go ahead and kind of skip to 0.9. Uh, it's like right on the money. So yeah, it, it pretty much doesn't trip until exactly, it's just under. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the, the current limit circuit on there works very accurately uh, and our our line regulation is very accurate. And again, our ripple, uh, now this is VR at RMS, so it's, you know, the the peak to peak ripple would be significant, uh, a little bit higher than that. You can uh, do the math to, to get your uh, peak to peak from that VRMS. Uh, but yeah, this is that, that AC ripple being measured there is in VRMS. Um, so really kind of not, not bad at all. That's, that's really good uh, ripple that we're getting out of this power supply for the size of it. It's amazing that they can fit any filtering in there at all. Let's uh, change it to five volts and uh, see how accurate we are at the five volt range. And let's also just see if our ripple stays about the same. Obviously we're having a lot of ripple right now because I'm changing what it's set to. All right, so down at the five volt range, which would be where I would use this thing more often than not, uh, we have same ripple and then our line regulation, 5.03. So, I mean, that's like right on the money. We, and we have, uh, again, 20 volts coming in. We can go up to uh, the 30 volts on here still and it'll keep working. Um, so definitely uh, from, from what I'm seeing here, it's a great power supply. So we're at, uh, 5.004 volts uh, with no load and then we turn on a load and we drop um, one millivolt. I mean that's uh, really good line regulation that this power supply has. Uh, it's very very accurate to, to what we want. So we, we're just, we just went from no load to pretty much full load of what uh, what I have it set to. Uh, we could set that current limit a little bit higher there. Um, 
and put a little bit more load on it. But I mean, really operation wise, this thing operates exactly how I would uh, expect it to work. So it's a, it's a great little power supply. I mean, honestly, it works better than I'd expect for the size of it. It, this, uh, it stays nice and cool. It's got a, a fan in the bottom of it. Uh, and it'll, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great little power supply. I mean, what, what more could you ask for out of the size of it? I, I guess the only thing more you could ask for is for the, uh, AC to DC to be included. Um, and it, it, there are more features to this power supply than I'm able to do because I don't have, there's a little master control unit that this thing can sit on it talks to it wirelessly uh, and you can you know program presets and do all of that from the master control unit obviously that's sold separately from um, the base power supply here but I mean to me this thing's a really a great power supply it's super super accurate um I get it back to five volts there I mean the uh, the line regulation and load regulation of this thing's uh, very impressive uh, it's it's better than a lot of your cheapo ones. I mean, obviously this thing is not cheap. Uh, it's a little over a hundred dollars uh, for it. And you're, you're still going to have to provide your own AC to DC power source for it. Um, so you're, you're probably going to be close to uh, $150, $200 uh, out the door getting this set up once you have you know, everything you need to be up and running. But uh, I think for the market this is intended for, which is to be a portable power supply, you're not going to beat it. There's there's going to be nothing else on the market um, that's really going to do what this does, you know, portable. You can you could use a, a battery pack on here. You could put, you could use a DC barrel jack on a battery pack and use this thing completely mobile if you wanted, uh, especially with that wide range of input it'll take. Um, again, just make sure you set your current limit. It has an input current limit. Set the input current limit to whatever your power source can provide and uh, do the math from there of what your, what your current limit and voltage is going in to figure out really what your actual max power is out of this thing. I mean, 300 watts is the limit. You're not going to get more than 300 watts out of it. Um, may maybe with some firmware changes, you could squeeze a little bit more out. Um, however, you're, um, you're really gonna you, 300 Watts is a lot for what you're getting here. And you can put more than one of these stack them up. Uh, you can control more than one with the, um, with the power, with the control unit that goes with this, uh, family of power supply. But I mean, this is perfect for what I need. I need a little power supply that I can, uh, put on my bench in my, in my house. Those ripple numbers were great. Uh, for a switch mode power supply that now, but remember that ripple is highly dependent on your, um, your input power supply. You, you need a good clean power supply to get a good clean ripple out of this thing. If you, uh, if you don't have that, you're just not going to have a, uh, a clean, uh, output power. If, if you're giving it dirty power, you're going to get dirty power. I mean, yes, it, it, it is going to, it has some filtering in there. If you, there's some other videos where they do teardowns, you can see it has some built-in filtering. Uh, however, there's only so much filtering you can fit in a package this size. And, um, yeah, there's, there's only so much rejection this thing's going to be able to do. Uh, it, it of course can give some ripple rejection. Uh, however, it's, uh, just not going to it's not magic. It can't, it can't do magic. So the advertised ripple on this is highly dependent on the input power source and the, um, advertised, uh, output power is again, very dependent on your, uh, input power supply there. Well, I hope you guys liked this review of this power supply. I got a lot of criticism on my last power supply review that I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, it was the review of that, uh, HM310, uh, P, uh, really what it was, was, uh, I think that criticism came from the fact that when I do these reviews, I don't like to actually read the whole manual beforehand. Um, and so I like to just see how good the user interface is on the product. Uh, this one was very intuitive. Um, the, the main thing I'd give to, to fault on here on the user interface is for this set, um, I was not able to find how to change this, uh, from just doing one, or I guess that's two places at a time. Like 
I, I was not able to find an easy way to scroll through this. I'm sure there is, um, although this really isn't meant to be completely standalone. You're, you're meant to buy that, uh, that other module that goes along with it. However, it will work standalone. And that was one of the things I wanted to show in this video was that this thing works standalone. You don't have to buy uh, the controller to go with it because uh, a lot of people are only showing it, you know, with the controller and the full package. And it, unless you really have a need for it, um, this is really enough for what it's designed to be, which is a, a mobile power supply that's just as, robust and powerful as say um that power supply there you know it, it's it's meant it's really meant to take the place of something like this just at the size of, of this so um that's that's its target audience is somebody with limited bench space that doesn't have the real estate to give up for a larger power supply um so if you have limited bench space, you're not going to find a better power supply, um, in my opinion. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you liked the review of this. I am going to have a link down in the description to buy one of these. Uh, I kind of recommend not using the link that I, I have. Um, I'm going to link it on Amazon. They're overpriced on Amazon. People want almost $200 for it on Amazon. Um, Manywhere's official store does not have them on Amazon. Uh, I think they should put them on there and they should sell them for what they're selling their other stuff for. Um, you can get them on AliExpress for about $70. That's why earlier in the video I said it's around $100. So kind of averaged uh, in between what they sell for from United States vendors versus what it sells for in China. Um, yeah, you can get this on... AliExpress, or uh, I think you can also get it on Banggood, uh, a whole lot cheaper than you can get it off of eBay or off of um, Amazon. I am going to do an Amazon link just because I had get the Amazon affiliates off of there. Um, I know some people just don't want to deal with AliExpress and they don't want to deal with Alibaba. So, uh, or sorry, um, uh, Banggood. Uh, so I'm going to have that link in the description for you guys. Uh, however, I, I do recommend shopping around. They they are cheaper in other places than they are on Amazon. They're they're like way overpriced on Amazon. Uh, it's, it's nearly $200 on Amazon. However, everywhere else they're under a hundred. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely shop around if you want one of these. But if you just want to, if you, if you want to support the channel and get something off of uh, Amazon, link is in the description. Well, I will uh, see you guys in the next one.